<laughs> What's up, everybody? I am Jesse. Here with us is Daniel, Kayla, and the beautiful man that you all Wait. may know as Stealth. He's Hello. too beautiful for this podcast. Yeah, so that's why that's, we can't see him. Yeah, he he turned his camera on. It was too much for it to take. It instantly broke. My laptop computer screen cracked. Mm -hmm. So now we just have to have him on audio. But we are all here to <laughs> talk about the next Zelda game. We're going to be discussing some of the stuff that we actually do know about it. Interviews from Miyamoto, Fujibayashi, other people who have worked on Breath of the Wild talking about what they would like to do for the next Zelda game. Whether that be the next big Breath of the Wild release or smaller A Link Between Worlds style 3DS game, whether it be on 3DS, Switch, whatever. Anyways, uh, most of this news comes from DreamTeamFC.com, where they say, Link Up, Zelda sequel, absolutely everything on the next Zelda game, release date, graphics, rumors, Nintendo Switch, Wii U version, and more. The very ending of that tells you they haven't updated this in a long time, because... <laughs> They're not going to be releasing anything on the Wii U. But anyways, uh, no. it says, A new game is coming, right? Yes, Nintendo producer Aichi Numa recently confirmed that a new Zelda game is in production, which honestly should be common sense. They begin pre-production of like whatever the next Zelda game is before like the last one ships. And like they always carry it's been over in production right. since 1986. <laughs> yeah, they like always they just start right away into the yeah. next thing. And then not only that, but they always have multiple Zelda games in production at the same time. Like they'd have the handheld development team working on like a Link Between Worlds, and then they'd have their Skyward Sword Breath of the Wild team working on something. And recently, they've had third parties like Grezzo working on like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask 3D. They've had third parties like Tantalus working on Twilight Princess HD. They've had third parties uh, like the Dynasty Warriors crossover for the Hyrule mm -hmm. Warriors, Hyrule Warriors Legends, and then the third port to the Switch. So like yeah. in the past, so if they start doing that Zelda two <laughs> yeah. remake we were just talking. <laughs> yeah, so like the the crazy thing here is like usually people think of like oh Nintendo they're like what's the next Zelda game going to be? What Zelda game are they working on? Where over the past few years it's like they've been working on three or four completely different Zelda games at the same time. Whether it was a remake by Grezzo or Tantalus or you know a port of Hyrule Warriors for like the Legends 3DS version or the Switch port, like, whatever it was, like, it seems there's been three or four different Zelda games in development at the same time. So whether or not Grezzo is now working on a Zelda game, I think they're, the last announced game was, like, Luigi's... Grezzo... Was it Luigi's yeah, mention? Yeah, that's exactly what they're working on now. Yeah. And then, uh, Tantalus or someone, who knows, could be working, like, on a Skyward Sword remake or porting twilight princess hd to the switch which everyone i think kind of believes is going to happen eventually getting wind waker hd and twilight princess on the switch anyways uh the first thing they have listed here is game director fujibayashi also told ign i can't say at this point if it will be in sequels or in continuations or what form it will take but i definitely have lots of ideas and lots of motivation right now uh I think while we while we were working on both the main game and the DLC, it was a process of constantly getting lots of different new ideas as we refined the game, and finding new things we wanted to do. Even in situations like this, talking to people and finding out that people want to pet dogs <laughs> gives me a lot of motivation, a lot of ideas That's for me. things we could put into the game. Let uh, me pet the dogs, yeah. please. <laughs> it goes At least you on. can feed them. Yeah, so. true. Uh, speaking to IGN, Al Numa gave a firm answer when it came to how the team wants to deal with Link games in the future. It's interesting that he said Link games, not Zelda games. I wonder, like, if that's like a. I mean, I guess uh, that's kind like, of. That could just be the way that true. this article worded it. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's more true, like, because Zelda herself isn't always in every Zelda game. Yeah. But, I mean... 
uh, the, the series. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird. Uh, the interview says uh, from Al Numa, you know, I can't speak to what other people, other companies will do in their own games, but I think for me, especially just in terms of the Zelda series, the incredible freedom that this game offers you and how well that's been received, to me, it means that freedom, that level of freedom is something that needs to be maintained in Zelda games going forward, Al Numa said. My eyes have been opened to how important that is, so one of the things that we definitely consider is that we always wanted to make sure the player would under could understand what their challenge is or what their hurdle is. We always wanted to make sure the challenge could be challenged, so we always wanted to make a linear way of overcoming a hurdle. Uh, this is interesting because it means that the next game, uh, judging by what Al Numa wants to do, won't be another Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword-like game to where it is one dungeon specifically after the previous. It'll be Spe yeah, more like open world. Order. Yeah, like go to whatever, like wherever you want to go to to do it. Like um, when you get to the dark world of A Link to the Past or yeah. in Breath of the Wild where you can just go literally anywhere after you get off the Great Plateau, although it does kind of guide you towards, like, Katino Village and some of the other places, mm -hmm. and you just naturally stumble upon Zora's Domain and stuff. But anyways, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it says, will this be another full game or a smaller project like A Link Between Worlds? There's always the chance the next Legend of Zelda Aonoma was referring to was a smaller project, perhaps something for the Nintendo 3DS. Alternatively, it could be a an add-on, much in the same way A Link Between Worlds or Triforce Heroes. Uh, will it be open world? Yep, Nintendo won't mess around. Uh, they're kind of restating the same thing. Uh, uh, the only thing is that, that this next point where it says uh, where and when it will take place, Hyrule most probably said after Breath of the Wild, that Where's the source for that? That's huge yeah, that's, conjecture. I was like kind of skipping down to the last one. That's why I said like some of this stuff that I was going to bring yeah. up isn't here. Um, it's mm -hmm. like interviews that I remember from Al Nova from like yeah. Game Informer and stuff. But, yeah, one thing I will say is um, it, it actually is a good idea to use the Breath of the Wild engine again just because of mm -hmm. how long it took to make and how much it cost and how many yeah. man hours went into it. Um, I mean, I think Breath of the Wild is like a good base to build a new game i just want more actual dungeons and maybe yeah. even a smaller world yeah i i expect that we'll see dungeons again um strictly yeah. for the reason that um after scoured sword a lot of people said oh it's too linear so they based the whole game off of making it a non-linear experience yeah. um including and making shorter like bite-sized dungeons like the shrines or um the divine beast being a little less complicated uh, because they had to give you all the base abilities at the very beginning of the game and then set you loose. But because yeah. of that structure, um, most of the feedback from Breath of the Wild is like, we love how open it is, but we want more in-depth dungeons again. So I feel like they've been gradually like taking that feedback and running with it and imp implementing it heavily into the next Zelda game whenever they have that. Um, and so I, I would expect to see sort of those more in-depth dungeons, in my opinion, to return in a ne the next Zelda game. Uh, and and there are... A huge world. Yeah, what were you saying mm -hmm. still? The, and, and there are m multiple Zelda teams, so one could be working on, like, follow up, and the other could be doing a smaller thing, or the other team could be helping, you know, a, a partnership with another company, like, like they did with Hyrule Warriors. So, um... It's like one game in the pipeline um so yeah and yeah that is huge conjecture on i don't i don't know where that article got that you know about it taking place, place after we really, that, yeah that we really odd. don't know um yeah. they could really do whatever they want at this point mm -hmm. yeah um so a couple of things that i want to add in uh this is from other interviews that i remember uh specifically um there, w there was a joking thing that Miyamoto and Al Numa did to where uh, I think it was Game Informer. They were being interviewed like right after or right before Breath of the Wild released, and it was like 50 quick, like rapid fire questions or whatever. And they jokingly said that they were working on 
where they wanted to make uh, paper Zelda because they asked about Paper Mario, and I think Miyamoto or someone was wearing like a Paper Zelda shirt. Uh, yeah, and I they, think I had it. Yeah, and, and then like, the uh, <laughs> the person interviewing asked if that was something they were working on, and he like smiled and laughed and said, "Yeah." So I, whether that's a joke, who knows? Like the, I think a uh, Paper Zelda game, like for a 3DS type system like they've had like mm -hmm. yarn yoshi uh paper mario why not do something weird with zelda as well where they had yeah. like uh what was the other yarn game they had kirby kirby's yeah. epic yarn so they they've had like the yarn yoshi and yarn kirby they've had paper mario so why not make another didn't we already, didn't we already get paper link with a link between worlds <laughs> Kinda. I think that was the joke that he uh, that Onuma made because he had the link. Yeah. Um, which they reused the in, painting link on it. Yeah, and they they reused that gameplay mechanic in Mario Odyssey as well, to where Mario yeah. can pop on the walls, go to the. Yeah. Um, yeah. But which only was, specific walls, so it's a yeah. little less. Uh, and they yeah, but it, <laughs> they they copied the uh, the talking hat from Minish Cap as well. It was like they had a yes. bunch of the old Zelda <laughs> developers working on Mario Odyssey. But anyways, in the I think it may have been the exact same interview um, with Game Informer, Alanuma said that he would like to take what he's learned from Triforce Heroes, which was the multiplayer or the newest multiplayer Zelda game, if you don't count Hyrule Warriors. And apply uh, what he's learned from like the multiplayer of that with the engine of Breath of the Wild. Uh, but Alanuma in the past has said like multiple times that he's he would like to make like a, a larger scale Zelda like multiplayer Zelda game. But it's always for whatever reason come out as like you know two D Zelda games, which I guess is just easier from a development standpoint and doesn't cost as much. So we had like. Four Swords on the or Four Swords Adventures on the GameCube and then Triforce Heroes on the 3DS. So if he did take that multiplayer aspect and bring it to uh, like a Breath of the Wild sequel or whatever the next Zelda game would be, that would be really interesting. I know a mm. lot of people think like multiplayer would ruin the Zelda series or like oh they'd never mm. make a 3D multiplayer game. It's like well the creator of the game is like this is what he's saying that he would want and, and it, re it always reminds me of whenever they first announced Zelda Wii U before it was known as Breath of the Wild it was during the same Nintendo Direct whenever mm -hmm. they announced Wind Waker HD they were talking about changing the Zelda formula or like what we think of like traditional Zelda games and one of the things that they said was that he didn't want you to think of Zelda Wii U as a single player experience uh, whether that meant um, like adding full-on multiplayer like Triforce Heroes or adding in tidbits of multiplayer like we've seen the Miiverse functionality which in a way lets you communicate with multiple multiple people. Um, like I guess you could say that's not a single player experience on like a very very minor level because you are interacting with other people. Um, so like there's two very different ways you could look at what he was stating which uh yeah so whether it was like full-on multiplayer or the um just meverse functionality who knows what he was actually referring to because neither ended up coming to breath of the wild like it was very prominently a single player experience with like no tidbits of multiplayer uh the closest we got was with wolf link who was like an optional character and it wasn't a second player controlling him it was the ai but i always thought that would have been a good way to include multiplayer is where wolf link is completely optional if you tap the amiibo you have a partner there helping you anyways um like i don't think he can go into the dungeons or anything with you but he's still like attacking enemies helping you find stuff so what would the difference be if it was AI controlling it, or if your friend could just pick up a second controller and play as him. Like, I don't see how it would take away from anything, because again, you can play through the entire game without Wolf Link, so whether he's being controlled by AI or a second player, why not add that little functionality in there? Um, I always thought that would have been a perfect way for him to sort of give people a taste of multiplayer. 
Um, sort of like in Mario Odyssey, someone can control Cappy, which is completely optional, so why couldn't someone be able to control Wolf Link? That was just something that I liked. And that would but... be better than controlling Cappy, because for me, um, Cappy is kind of an extension of Mario's abilities. Uh, you know, Cappy serves as like a double jump, or um, and to have another player control Cappy is like kind of disruptive to the flow of the gameplay. Um, and it makes doing just like the regular jumping and platforming more difficult. Whereas having Wolf Link, he's a completely separate entity to Link. He's completely, Link is completely autonomous without him. Whereas Mario Odyssey is built around using Cappy well. Um, Breath of the Wild, you can play through it without Wolf Link completely, like you said. And you don't lose out on any of your abilities or anything like that. Um, so uh, for me, that serves, in my opinion, as a way better second player option than having someone pick up and be Cappy. Uh, yeah. Like, way better. Yeah. 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 All right, um, uh... <clears throat> sorry, for me personally, whenever I think about wanting to do, like, two-player Zelda games or anything, mm -hmm. I'm personally, like, I don't think I would want that. Like, yes, I would love to have more multiplayer games in order to play with friends, but what friends? <laughs> <laughs> but... I do, however, really like the one-player, two-player method where one person has the nunchuck and the other person has the Wiimote, and it adds for extra difficulty and lots of yelling and laughter. Yeah. Um, Sounds ridiculous. <laughs> but, yeah. But fun. What, what is it, like, Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U? It's multiplayer, doesn't it let someone play on the gamepad and the other person plays on the screen? So, like, yeah. if uh, Breath of the Wild or whatever the next multiplayer Zelda game is like if it was on something like the Wii U then it would have been like an interesting way for like oh you can play as Wolf Link with the gamepad and the other person can just play as Link with the normal pro controller but with the Switch like I don't know like I guess it would have to be like online co-op unless it went split screen mm -hmm. but anyways uh, Stealth what are your thoughts on a multiplayer Zelda game uh, like Al Numa like Developers always talk about, or directors of games always talk about, what they would like to do, and it often comes out to be nothing like what the company paying them to make the game actually wants them to make. So even though Al is saying that he would like to make a multiplayer Zelda game with the Breath of the Wild engine doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. But what do you think the likelihood of it is happening, or the likelihood of it happening actually is? And would you personally like it? Well, um, I think the likelihood would have been better if Triforce Heroes didn't sell as badly as it did. Um, it sold really, really badly for even like a spin-off Zelda game. Um, so I, I, I think if that like sold Gangbusters, that that would have given them a lot more reason to, you know, want to do another one. Um, is another one still possible? Sure. I just like at the top of the, uh, at the top of the priority list. Um, and, and honestly, I would like to see something more like Triforce Heroes, where really the whole game are just a bunch of dungeons, and you go through your friend, and you go through it with, with your friends. Um, I, I think Triforce Heroes came out at, at a at a particularly kind of weird time when you know I think Breath of the Wild had gotten like, and so it it kind of had a lot going against it. But the game is really good; it just didn't sell. So I would like to see something more like that for Switch. Would you prefer it being like the top-down style that the previous multiplayer games are, or would you rather it be like the first actual 3D, like behind-the-back camera angle Zelda game being multiplayer? Either one, it wouldn't really make too much of a difference to me, just as long as like the dungeons are really creative and the weapons they use are really creative. That, that's really what I care about. All right, uh, Daniel, Kayla, do you guys have any final thoughts on this? Well, I'm not objectively opposed to multiplayer in Zelda. Um, I think the biggest issue and the reason I own Triforce Heroes but I've never finished it is because when playing a game like Breath of the Wild or any other one-player Zelda game, I can sit down on my own time and play it. Whereas trying to play through Four Swords or Triforce Heroes or something, like it's not as it's clearly built around playing with other people and getting those other people together is a far bigger challenge than any dungeon in the game <laughs> so um, that makes it more difficult 
to play through it and I feel like, oh, my gaming is suddenly dependent on other people being present. Um, and that just makes it so much more difficult for me to actually get into the game. Um, so I would rather it be like an optional two player thing where like a second player can come in and you can do co-op or, you know, there are lots of other games that do it. Borderlands being a great example where it's an awesome single player experience, but it's also a really fun co-op experience. Um, so there's lots of games that do that. And I think if that's something they wanted to do, that would be awesome. But if they build the game completely around co-op, it makes it that that just getting you to play the game becomes a hurdle in itself. Mm-hmm. And that's a turn off for me. I was just thinking about the uh, the discussion we did about the uh, like potential or the, the crazy ideas for Nintendo themed um Battle Royale? Uh, yeah, the, the Nintendo themed Battle Royale thing. So, like, we were talking about multiplayer Zelda games. Like, it just made me think of the, the Pikmin idea that Daniel had. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the crazy Pikmin's yeah, just trying uh, to kill each other. The Pikmin. <laughs> so, yeah. But they yeah, will fight I, to the death. I totally agree with Daniel. Like, I think if they could add co op in a way like they did with Borderlands, where you can get through the story mode just kind of in a different way. Like, with Borderlands, basically what they did is when you add more people, the difficulty goes up. Which I think makes sense. So yeah. All right. I guess it's it just hard. It's it just hard oh, to do drop, drop. You know, in and out co-op like you can do in Borderlands with like a Zelda dungeon. Like Zelda yeah. dungeons need to be built around co-op rather than. Um. I think that would have to be like a separate mode. Yeah, or, or I was gonna say it could be like an alternate mode. Yeah. Yeah, because like dungeon design and stuff. Um, with multiplayer is a lot different than single player. Like if you're building it strictly focused on multiplayer, like there's all of the times when like you have two different switches that need to be struck at the same time, or there's two or three different switches that you need to step on at the same time. Um, usually in some Zelda games, like you could set like an Ocarina of Time, like set Princess Ruto on one switch. And then an example, you can go stand on another one or you can use like boxes or something that you can pick up to like mash three or four switches down uh majora's mask had the elegy Elig- of emptiness or whatever it was called for you to make a statue to stand there um so like there's ways to get around it to where you could do puzzle solving with one player while using multiple people um the uh the thieves hideout and majora's mask that side quest where you had to play as cafe and link to run side by side i always thought that would have been uh like a cool way to introduce multiplayer to majora's mask whenever i was little that was something that i always wanted is like oh well if we can play as cafe in this one tiny little 10 second puzzle it would be really cool if uh like my friend could sit beside me i play as link they could play as cafe and then go around but that would completely break the story of the game <laughs> <laughs> but it's just interesting ideas uh but like the story in triforce heroes is just like link travels to the distant land and then there just happens to be two people there that just look exactly like him <laughs> anyways it's a popular look i guess <laughs> yeah uh Ooh. i guess that brings us to the very end uh of the podcast <laughs> i'm <No>. just kidding <laughs> <laughs> of the, the the news we got the the discussion topic uh which hopefully we can quickly get through and then i guess we'll take one question each but stealth we are going to be bringing on Ilya, i believe because we were supposed to be bringing on connor Se- yeah what about sexy was- mac well sexy mac he messaged me but i haven't seen him in the chat he is in the chat is he yeah, he just said Pikmin Battlegrounds. Okay, I see him there. All right. Well, we're going to be bringing Sexy Mac on. So, Stealth, once again, for people, where can they find you? It was at Stealth on Twitter with three underscores. At Stealth with three underscores, and thanks for having me on. Yes, thank you for yeah, joining. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Hey everyone, it's me again, Elia Rose. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. And you know what? If you're a fan of videos like this, you should totally subscribe and give this video a like and comment below to let us know what type of videos you would like to see us create in the future. 
And if you would really like to support all of us here at the Game Over Jesse channel, please consider purchasing a Game Over Jesse t-shirt or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where you can receive many rewards, such as getting shoutouts, having any topic or theory that you select discussed on the podcast or made into its own video, having your question answered, joining on as a guest on the podcast, and playing with us during our Twitch live streams at twitch.tv slash gameoverjesse, and much, much more. 